Happy Halloween, unschoolers! I wanted to uh, do a video to tell you how our Halloween adventure went this year. So my five and a half year old was excited to try to carve pumpkins. Uh, this was an old pumpkin carver from a different year. It was solid and um, I think it's really the best. I'm glad we saved it. Now you can see it does not really puncture the skin. Um, and this one is not too sharp at the end. Um, my five and a half year old did an amazing job using this sawing action. Um, pretty much did his whole pumpkin on his own. My three and a half year old did a really good job trying and with some help, obviously, three and a half. And I, I think they have a hard time with their age difference and being able to do things that, that the other one wants to be able to do. Um, so I just remind them that there's an age, age difference. My oldest one was not doing this at three and a half and that they will be able to do it when they are five and a half. So, um, yeah, letting your unschooler carve pumpkins at five and a half. Um, I was so proud that he could do it and he was so proud of himself that uh, he did three. He carved three pumpkins <laughs> this year because it was amazing. The first two, all his own idea. Um, let me show you. We got a lot of our pumpkin ideas from this book, Little Blue Truck Halloween. So we talked about triangle eyes, triangle nose, smiley faces, and we look through the book to get our inspiration. So the first two pumpkins, my five-year-old um, drew on paper first the idea and then put it on the pumpkin. Now, I love arts and crafts, so I'm in there doing it too. This year, I attempted to do this on my pumpkin and it actually turned out pretty good. Um, I usually just do a pumpkin face, but because I bought the kit with the knives, um, this came with it. So there's a little poker. So you put this on and then you poke around where you want to um, cut. And it gives you an idea and um, it turned out really good. Obviously, I'm in my 30s and I've been pumpkin carving for a long time and I explained that to my five-year-old. Like, I... I'm not five. I have done this for many years and have had lots of pumpkin carving practice. It's his first year, so I'm not expecting him to do this. <laughs> but my five and a half year old, very determined, he picked out a different sheet, which I don't know where it went, but um, of a face, eyes, a nose, and a mouth. But it was the same pattern and he put it on his pumpkin. He used the whole puncture and he did an amazing job. It looks like not a five-year-old <laughs> did it. Um, one of the eyes he did cut, so um, we just used a toothpick to hold it in place, and it was fine, and we talked about growth mindset, you know? Next time, you'll learn that you don't cut that part because it will fall off. So it was a great growth mindset opportunity. Um, and he was still so proud because the next eye, he didn't cut the little circle out of the eye. And I just um, am so proud. And he was so proud. And uh, yeah, pumpkin carving with a five and a half year old for unschooling. It's what we did. Uh, I also wanted to go back to the um, peanut butter and jelly episode. If you haven't watched that one yet, watch it because it's also about like knives and letting your kids do it. Obviously, I was right next to my kids the whole time we did the pumpkin carving, just FYI. Um, peanut butter and jelly is super healthy for you. It's totally okay. We use wheat bread, but you do whatever you gotta do. Um, I know some people are allergic to peanut butter. Use whatever nut butter you want. But I wanted to add to that video that the Milwaukee Bucks basketball team has a peanut butter and jelly spread that they 
can eat whatever they want. They've got different types of bread, different types of jellies, different types of nut butters before their game. And they started doing that this year when they won the championship. So look into that and how good peanut butter and jelly truly is. Um, another Halloween thing, sorry, I'm jumping around here. I am a big believer in nap time and just quiet time because a five and a half year old doesn't need to nap and I get that, but they do need to have some quiet time to think about their thoughts and to do whatever it is they need to do in their bedroom. And I'm also trying to take quiet time during that time as well. So during quiet time, my five and a half year old left his room, got the step stool from the bathroom and grabbed our happy Halloween sign. He took the sign down, he took it to his room, grabbed pen and paper, and wrote it all by himself. No one said, oh, we're gonna write happy Halloween today. No one said, this is how you do an H. This is how you do happy. Did it all by himself, self-motivated. Um, and from the birthday episode, he already knew how to spell happy, but Halloween is a super long word that he learned how to spell. Another Halloween thing, um, that I don't love about Halloween, but is kind of the point is bones and ghosts. Now we didn't totally talk about death or the day of the dead, but Halloween is kind of about processing your fears and it might be the time change or the season change, but we have not been sleeping great. We have been having a lot of fears and um, talking about our feelings and working through that. So it's another great things to talk about around this season. So this is a long video and I'll let you guys go, but uh, happy Halloween, happy homeschooling, and we'll talk to you all later. Bye-bye.